Okay, today I want to talk about trust the process of God. Trust his process that's going on in your life and the lives of people around you and the process that you're in. Amen? Now we know that in Ecclesiastes he says this, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. And I want, to, want you to know that, that you're involved in that, in the purpose under heaven that, that has to do with you personally, purpose under heaven that you have to do with, you have to deal with things around you, that God is working around you, whether it's with the people of the world that will never know Christ or the, or the people of the church that are called into Christ. Doesn't matter. The people that you have to do with, God's orchestrating everything. You know, the Antichrist can't come on the scene until it's time. God's in total control of all those things, amen? He controls the heavens, he controls the earth. He's in control of everything. And you... You have to endure the process. The process that's been going on in your life. Just think about it. Think of your life and the process that has been going on in it. And God's in total control of that. He's taking you into things and he's bringing you out of things. And then he's taking you into things and he's bringing you out of things. In your life there was a time to sow and then there is a time to reap. In your time, there's a time to be born. In your life, in your personal life, there's a time to be born, and there'll be a time that we'll all go to your funeral too if we don't make it there before you. It's all a process, but you must endure the process. You must endure it. Now understand that there's processes going on all around you, and it's a God thing. It's a God thing that's going on. We prayed for those those two pastors that are over in Iran and they're thrown in jail just because they believe in Jesus. There's a process going on. And God wants us involved in that process many times with our prayers and our understanding. We read in Revelations where there's martyrs in Revelations and they're in heaven and they're crying out to God. They're praying to God. Oh Lord, how long will you not avenge us? Of all the bloodshed down there, there's people saying that in heaven. So if you'd ever think that people are not praying in heaven, you got it wrong. They are. They are praying in heaven. And they cry out to God, and God says, just hold on a little while. He says, there's a few more martyrs that got to be martyred yet. There's some of your brethren that's got to be killed yet. There's a process going on down there that you got to be part of. Be at peace. Amen. And he gave them all white robes. Amen. He said, just hold on. I know, I know it's inside you that you're crying out, look what's going on down there, the evilness that's going on. And God says, I got it all under control and I got more things that's got to happen. I got a process going on. Amen? Amen? And that's just the truth of the matter. And we have to be involved in that process in many ways, in many ways. And understand this, that when we're on the outside and there's nothing we can do, we know that there's a process going on. Jesus says in, in Isaiah chapter 45, 45 verse 7 he said that I form the light I create darkness now God said this and I don't care what your theology says I'm just reading you the word of God so I'm not taking it out of context or anything he says I form the light I created the darkness I make peace did not God make peace with all the nations for Solomon Amen? Did he make peace for David? No, David had to go out and kick their... And show that God was on his side. But then he said, Solomon, God is going to make peace with all the nations around you. 
and did he not? Is he able to make peace with your enemies around you? If you but pray and serve the Lord. Yes, he can. He says, for I formed the light, I created the darkness, I made peace, I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And when we say evil, we don't mean like evil, hideous evil. We're calling, we're saying, God, that he controls everything. He causes a war over here, and he brings peace over there. He has an agenda. That's why we say everything that the Lord does, he is holy. When he went and sent an angel and killed Herod because Herod gave a speech. And Herod thought, and the people say, it's a God that's speaking. And Herod took the glory. God sent an angel and struck him down with worms. For God is holy. Everything he did when he sent that angel, that's holy. That's why we cry, we cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty because there is no sin in him no matter what he does. There is no sin in the Lord. He's perfect in all his ways and you need to know that and you need to trust in that, that he has a process, process that is holy and it is operating even though there are martyrs, even though there are saints dying, even though our saints having a hard time, he is holy and that he could deliver you in a, in a heartbeat. But he has a process that's going on in your life. He's got a process that's going on in your life. Trust the process. Trust it. It's a good thing. He puts you down for a while and then he raises you up by the jaws. That's God. That's a God thing. In Romans, in chapter 9, this is a process too, and I want you to see the process of God. That he's got a process going on. In Abraham's life, Sarah, He's got a process going on with Israel. And Paul said that everybody that's called an Israelite is not all Israelites, but only those that are of the promise. He says, and not only this, but when Rebecca received by one, even by our father Isaac, the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, it will stand, not by works, but of him that calleth. Do we understand what we're saying there? God has a plan. He's got a plan. He's got, he had a plan for this family. He's got a plan for each one of us. According to what he wants, his election. And it was said unto her, the elder, the oldest son shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. In other words, God says the blessings will be on Jacob, but Esau, yes, he's going to be blessed, but that's not where the promise goes. But that's not the valley that the promise flows in. The older will serve the younger. The older will have to know, if I want the blessing of the Lord, i got to follow the younger. And how many know that he didn't? He had a real hard time with that. But he even sold his birthright for a morsel of food. He was not right in the head. Amen? He was not right in the heart. Something was missing. But the promise was missing. Because he wasn't part of it. He wasn't part of it. There's a process. There's a plan of God. Trust in the process. Trust in the process. You're going to be very distraught sometimes in your life. And say, God, what's going on? And God says, I got a process going on. And the process is all about you right now in your dealings. And I'm dealing with you. Sometimes you might be a, a someone that looks 
to the people of God and you're helping them and you just want to pull your hair out and you say, God, what's going on? Why this person, how one day cold the next? How one day cold the next? Come in, they go through Purell and then they say, oh, I'm going to serve you, God. And then they really don't or they do for a while and then it's all like back and it goes, golly, Lord, what are you doing? God says, process. <laughs> Trust in it. Amen. Amen. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? In 9.15, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Just think about those words that God just said there. Does he not have a process? Does he not have a plan? If he's being merciful to some and not merciful to others, does he not have a plan? And should we not trust that plan? When we see one nation rise and another one fall, should we not trust in the Lord? And in those nations are millions of people either rising or falling under bondage. Should, should we not trust God? And if we see our own nation fall under bondage, under socialism, should we not trust the Lord and seek him? Amen. And walk with him? Should we not have a clue on what's going to happen too? The Lord says, I will hide nothing from my prophets. Are you not the temple of Christ? Should we be like mules, dumb, not knowing what way to go or what's going on? But are we saints of God? Are we sons and daughters of the Most High? Therefore the scriptures say, Pharaoh, for even the same purpose, purpose, process, I have raised thee up. He raised Pharaoh up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name would be declared throughout all the earth. He raised Pharaoh up for one reason. Get this. Get this down. He raised him up for one reason. He gave him all kinds of power. He caused him to conquer all the nations around him. No, nobody messed with Egypt. Nobody messed with Pharaoh. He'd just kill you. Amen? But God says, I gave him all that power, that my name would resound through all the earth, for I will destroy him. I will part the Red Sea. I will take a people that are under bondage and I will bring them out from among them. And I believe God is doing that with Christians today. He's bringing them away from Pharaoh. Amen. Amen. And he's going to part a Red Sea. And you're going to follow him. And you're going to look behind you and the enemy will be drowning. Amen. But you'll be okay. Amen. Therefore... Has he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and on whom he will he hardeneth. That's the scripture. Verse 18. He hardens hearts to free his saints. I believe our Congress, our Senate, I believe that God has hardened the hearts of so many men that he will free us. And we will rise up and wake up and see what's going on with our country and cry out to God and we will rise up in a mighty way and get back with God. I believe our nation, there's millions of people that God wants, him, wants them to come back to him. And he's doing something. And he's going to show his might. I don't care about Obamacare. I got God care going on. Amen. Amen. I don't need that. Right now, we might say, well, we need it. But I'll tell you, there's a day coming that the glory of God's coming back to the church. Amen. Glory of God, like in the days of old, like in Azusa Street. You know what that pastor did? There would be people on stretchers. They brought them in. They had a pile of wheelchairs, a pile outside the church, crutches and wheelchairs. And this is what he prayed. He said, I just pray for him, that God would heal him. And healing come in and just heal him. They were healed in their services. He didn't have to go over and lord over them and, oh God, release the power and go on and on. He just say, let it be healed. 
The kids were hiding in the glory of the Lord in the church. The little children would play because the glory was so strong you couldn't see through it. In places in the church, what was going on? I don't know. But that's their story. I believe in the glory of the Lord. I believe in the presence of God. I've been fortunate enough, and many have been fortunate enough to feel the tangible presence of the Lord. It'll only get stronger because I believe the Lord told me that yesterday. Paul says, Thou will thou say unto me, Why does thou, Paul says, You people say unto me, Why do ye yet find fault? Talking about God. For whom has resisted his will? Why does God find fault for those that he's hardened their hearts like Pharaoh? Why does he find fault with him? He hardened his heart. He says, Pharaoh, I will harden his heart and he will not let you people go. But then I'll kill his firstborn and all the firstborn and he will know that there is a God mightier than he. Oh, that's sure against some of our theology, isn't it? That isn't what we've been taught. Shame on us for believing a lie. Shame on us for not understanding the depths of God and the process of the Lord. Amen? But, nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say unto him that formed it, Why have you made me like this? I'm going to say this today. God has made each one of you to be saints of God and to give him praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And that's our due. And not to do our own thing, but to do his thing. Amen. Amen. And not to decide from God who we are, but ask God who are we. Amen. 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 Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endures such a long time, long-suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? What if God, and we say, God, why don't you do something? And God says, I'm waiting for a long time here. I've got those vessels of dishonor tucked off to a side to show my power and my might. They'll do what they do, and I want you to really see what they're doing. They're fitted for destruction only, but I want you to see what they're doing. But I want you to see that I have power to change things. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he has afforded prepared unto, unto glory. That's you. From the beginning of time to the time he stretched out the heavens and he measured everything. And he put the stars here and there. He knew you. That's pretty good, isn't it? And he knew that you'd be in this time of the coming back of Christ. So that's why Peter says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time because that's the process for you. That you may be exalted, whether you be in prison, whether you be out of prison, that you'd be exalted and Christ would shine through you. Humble yourself under that process. We fight the process so many times because it isn't our process. But God says, it's my process. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the process. Amen? Amen. In Psalm 63, this is you. Psalm 63. I know, when will I ever get a computer up here? I just like thumbling with my Bible. He says, O oh God, thou art God, 
Early will I seek thee. This is you. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee. In a dry and thirsty land. Where there is no water. Amen. To see thy power. And thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. As you have been in your secret place. And you have felt the power of God. And the sizzling power of the Lord. And you've seen God work in a mighty way. You say oh God in this thirsty and dying land of the USA. Let your spirit be here like never before. For I experience your power, God, when I am shut up in my closet. I want to see it out here, God. You heal me, God. You have taken care of me. Now take care of this nation. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. I will lift up my hands. Amen. That you be so strong in the Lord and so determined in God that the process is there. Working because you trust in it. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with my lips. When I remember thee on my bed in the middle of the night and meditate on thee in the night watch. I will remember you on my bed. Is that you? I will remember the Lord when I lay down my head. And I will praise thee. And I will meditate on thee because thou hast been my help. Therefore, therefore in the shadow of thy wings shall I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholds me. I follow hard after the Lord. That's our lot as the saints of God. As the saints of God. In 1 Peter, here's you. 1 Peter. Four ten. As every man has received the gift, each one of you have received a gift. Even so minister the same one to another. You have a duty one to another. Each one of you have a duty one to another. You have a gift that you must minister one to another. Whatever that gift is. If it's a gift of praying and intercession, whatever that gift is, and if it's a gift of, of, of having visions or dreams by God, you have a duty to give that to one another. Even so, minister, same gift, one to another, as good stewards, amen, trusting in the process of God and of the manifold grace of God. If any man speaks, let him speak by the oracles of God. Let him speak by the Spirit of God, amen. Because we have the glory. We're vessels of honor. Not darkness. We're vessels of honor. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let him do it. As the ability of, of God which giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So on 5, 6 as you look over there it says humble yourselves. Under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God. Because as you sweep up in verse 17. 417. It says this. For the time has come. The judgment must come. At the house of God. It must begin. With us. Because he's, he's the one that wants to change us. And if, if it first began at us, what well, shall the end be of them obeying not the gospel of the Lord? So he says, verse 7, 5, 7, slip down there now. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Amen. He cares for you. Be sober. Don't be foolish. Be sober. Have understanding. Don't be as a mule. 
because and be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour and I'll say this he is devouring saints and he is devouring nations as we stand here and sit here today he's devoured and has devoured nations and sadly to say he is devouring the United States of America but praise God for a plan. Amen. Praise God that he's got a process going on. Amen? Amen? For we don't trust in what we see, but we trust in the one we cannot see. Amen? Amen. Verse 10, we'll end with this. But the God of all grace, he's a God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered in the process. You have suffered a while, and it makes you perfect, it establishes you, and it strengthens you, and it seats you down where you need to be, that you'd be unmovable. You need, need not be like a straw in the wind, but yet you'd be hankered down to the truth. Amen? So we're here today. We're going to trust in the process of God. Amen? Amen? We're trusting in that. God's got a process going on in your life. And don't you dare leave this place feeling bewildered. Not after the scriptures that were given to you. Amen. God has a process going on. And one day, we might have to be martyred or we might just die. It's a process that's going on and it's okay. When you're in Christ, amen? amen? It's okay. It's a process. Trust in the process. He have mercy on you. He have mercy on you. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of strength. He's a God of might. Don't you worry this week. But minister the gift that you've been called to minister... God forbid that you would hold that gift inside you and not let it out. God forbid. Hallelujah.